think as I'm running out of beans for now, but I don't think I've shown you this yet. Hopefully. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel, The Inked Reader. My name is Eva and today I am trying something new. And the reason why I'm doing this, the other day I was discussing books with one of my colleagues and I realized how I had some staple books throughout all my life that I keep mentioning to people, especially if I like reading. I would kind of try and exchange opinions of the books that I cherished growing up or that had such an impact on me. Books that shape the way afterward I kept reading, for example. And books that started a trend or genre that I would read after having read that book. And I can always associate a moment in my time as someone who's always read a lot since she could read. I realized that there are so many instances in my life, so many phases of my life that I could actually associate with books. And I thought, why not make a timeline of my life with books? and using the books that shaped me. So I've got a lot of books here on the floor. The only books I don't own physically, I do own them in Italy, so maybe they are still at my mum's house and I've not brought them here. The majority I did, but might be part of a series which I always had in Italy or in Italian, or maybe my mum wanted to read that and I left it there. So I've done actually a proper timeline. Yeah, I cannot draw. Yes, I'm just doing journaling for relaxing, okay? I'm not an artist will never be and I'm still finishing this. I will give some synopsis of some of them if I think they're necessary. I want, when we come to a certain section, I'll explain why I'll just mention them but not go into any details and very famous books I'm not gonna bother because I don't want these to be a month of a video. <laughs> reading when I was five years old and at the beginning I was just reading everything I could get my hands on. I think I had a lot of children books I remember but we're not going through those because yeah children books. I've read many, my mom would read to me sometimes and the first thing though I really got into was the Geronimo Stilton series of books. Now these are translated in English but are originally Italian books and they're all about the adventures of this mouse and if you have children and they are around that age range I would definitely suggest those. Although I'm not going to reread them now as an adult because I would probably hate them. I remember that I was absolutely in love with Geronimo Stilton. It was fun, it was adventurous and I love the drawings. There were so many of those which I could go through and I would devour them and every time a new one would come out I would just go and read it. It helps the fact that Geronimo Stilton was this very intelligent and funny at the same time awkward mouse. And then I went to Sardinia for the holidays and this was around 2002, 2001, so around 10 years old and I was there just minding my own business, enjoying playing with my cousins at the seaside and if you've not been to Sardinia you should go because it's one of the most beautiful places for holidays and just relaxing you can go to. And I remember that my aunt was reading Harry Potter and she said do you want to try this? And for the rest of the holidays basically I say goodbye to my cousins, I say goodbye to the seaside and I would spend my days um, outside in the patio of the house we would rent just reading freaking Harry Potter. So I do have here the illustrated editions. I do not have my um, copies of the not illustrated ones just because they're in Italy. I do have the illustrated ones, which I love, absolutely. And I've been rereading them every time one of these comes out. Now, I am aware of the controversy with J.K. Rowling and all of that. I'm not gonna go into that. And I just wanna mention that I cannot, I would be lying if I say that Harry Potter as a child wasn't a staple of my childhood and started me down the trend of fantasy because it did. So I'm just recounting experiences and what shaped my reading life moving forward, not getting to the controversy in this video. And then when I was around 12 years old, I kind of started discovering contemporary. And I remember, this is not the first book in the series I'm aware of, but I remember that I was again a summertime and I would go and purchase books from this tiny shop in a small city we were kind of staying. I was not having a good time. I didn't have a nice childhood. 
<laughs> spoiler alert so books saved literally my life and i was hating every moment of that holiday if not for me having actually Louise Rennie's uh, George Nicholson Chronicles books to read and I remember that my mom would buy me all these books just kind of keep me content because she was aware of how miserable I was so they always bought me books I in that sense I was always lucky I think they kind of my family recognized that books were my saving grace so I always had access to books and I remember that summer kind of when going through all the books that were out at the time, I think around six or seven, I don't remember exactly. And I loved it. And those are the Avengers of Georgia and her fat cat. And she's a English child who was very awkward and going through her first crush and all of those things and was just very funny. And then we get to those, I think around 13, 13, I was around 13 years old when I discovered the Leecher trees. Now this is again, not the proper Cover. If I have time, I'm gonna put it here. But this is the Chronicle of the Immersed World. This is an Italian book which has been translated, not this one, not the sequels, but the first trilogy has been translated in English. And this is the first YA fantasy I really got into. And I remember it was the story of this half elf, half human who wanted to be a warrior and she goes to become a warrior and fly on dragons and ultimately kick asses and become. Oh, well, I don't want to spoil it in case someone wants to read it, but yes, I love that and I loved all the sequels even more. I'm not going to dive into this because I don't think they are translated. However, the first trilogy is, if you're young and into YA, it might be worth a try. In English, Italian, they were beautifully written, don't know how they hold on the translation. And also the covers, like all the covers are stunning like this. And then we hit 14 years old and... 14 years old, I think it's when I honestly started to read more grown-ups, adult books, which I shouldn't have read, I shouldn't have been given, but I was very curious and again people would just give me books and people would just allow me to read whatever I wanted. My grandmother used to live in this house with a hall made of old bookshelves, like she has so many books and I remember I would just go and pick one up. But this book, which is funny by Erica John, this was given to me by my stepmother and I don't remember what happened, but she just said, I've been loving this when I was a teen, you might love it as well. And I did. This is the story of this prostitute, if I'm not mistaken. I've read this ages ago, I should reread it. But I remember her being a poor girl that goes into prostitution basically to sustain herself. And then there's a bunch of misfortunes. And it was pretty explicit. So for me, it was a big deal back then. I was reading a grown-up book full of grown-up content. I would not suggest this to a 14 years old. No, probably. I've not read it again, so I don't remember the content, honestly. But I remember that that kind of open up a new world of actually erotica and um, romance books, which I was not exposed to before, and also historical fiction. So this kind of started my passion, which these days is not that intense for historical fiction, but I do enjoy my historical fiction sometimes, and I think it's because of funny, to be fair. I would not vouch for these books right now because I've not really read them. I'm just saying these books shaped me growing up. And then we have me, again, I was still 14 at the time, and I think I was basically literally passing through middle school to high school. And in high school, for some summer holidays, my literature teacher gave us a bunch of vampire books. And boy, am I grateful that she did, because I read Dracula by Bram Stoker, which to these days is my favorite classic. I know that a lot of people do not like Dracula or think that it's slow, but these to me open up the world of gothic fiction, of vampires, of creatures. And I was terrified and fascinated. I remember that all that summer I devoured those books that she gave us around five. Now I don't remember the title of the others, but I do remember her. Dracula. I'm not gonna get into any details because actually I've realized that since then, since that summer when I was 14 years old, I've read so many vampire books. This started a whole chapter of my life, which is still actually ongoing, that I want to do a video about my favorite vampire books and what vampire books I suggest or I remember loving at least. So I'm gonna do this separately. So all the vampire books mentioned here, I'm gonna just brush through. But Dracula, to this day, my favorite classic. 
just it's dracula i love dracula and then we hit 15 years old and 15 years old is actually when i stopped going to high school it was very bad moment of my life it was very it was years 15 to i'd say 18 were very dark years for me where i was homeschooled i at 15 as and I remember the last year I lived with my mother, which was when I was 15, I was very miserable and all I did was reading, so my mum would take me sometimes to the bookstore, she would allow me to buy books, I would go home and read them, binge read them all day. And I went through the Shannara Chronicles by Terry Brooks so quick, so fast. Now I know that as of these days, they don't have a good reputation. I know that they're not the best fantasy out there, but they did start their passion for epic fantasy and those fantasy that takes place in another world and all of that. So I did, I do hold them in high esteem because of that. They started a lot of that, still ongoing strong to these days. And it was, it started there. But what reinforced their love to the point that became an obsession and it still is to, again today, is Game of Thrones. So I remember that when I was finishing the Shannara Chronicles, when I was in my late 15, um, I remember that I was desperate. I didn't know what to get. And then I found Game of Thrones. And in Italy, I divided each book in two. I didn't know that at the time. So I read basically a bunch of more books for what you would have, for example, if you were living in England or in America, just because they're condensed. And Game of Thrones. Everybody knows what Game of Thrones is. I'm not going to in any details, but this to this day is one of my ultimate favorite books ever. I saying that I was obsessed, it's downplaying it. Very end of my 15 years, I read Twilight. Now, Twilight was not my first vampire books. I already loved vampires. And again, this is a book that my aunt passed me to me. The same aunt who gave me Harry Potter told me read this because she had bought her from my cousin. And ha, ah, so I would say that Twilight opened up the vampire romance books, more of the vampires, because I was already loving vampire, but this added the layer of YA, different kind of vampires and romanticized them. So all of a sudden I wasn't scared of vampires, I was in love with vampires. And that's all thanks to Twilight. And at the same time, I was lucky enough that my grandmother would have this book by Giorgio Faletti um, is an Italian author who unfortunately passed away now. It's just floating around her studio. And I remember picking it up and she told me, oh, I couldn't read it, but maybe you want to give it a try. And that book was I Kill by Giorgio Faletti. It is translated. And oh boy, did I love that thriller. So that's a murder crime story. And I remember, I don't know how now because I know the twist but I remember at the time I could not put that book down and is a mammoth of a book again and I read it like probably two days and I became obsessed so that is how I came to love crime books and thrillers it was all thanks to Giorgio Faletti and Aikyo so then we reach on my 16 years so and then during my 16 um, of the first month of my 16 I actually went and spent a few months in America at my aunt's house and I became obsessed there with Charlene Harris, uh, the Suki Steckhouse series. I was at the time still reading Twilight and I wanted to go more into vampires. And what perfect choice, if not the Suki Steckhouse series. There is a TV show which I really enjoyed, it's called True Blood, based on the series. Again, I'm not going to get into any details, but I read that series in probably three months and it was like 12 books, something of the sort. Among other things, I remember I was particularly obsessed with that series and in, in USA they would just sell you boxes and I would just go to um, Barnes and Nobles, I think it's called, and just buy everything I could put my hands on with vampires and especially with steakhouse one. So when I moved back in Italy, I actually went at the point to live alone. And, and at the time I was 16, not ideal going to live alone at 16, and I remember that again, books saved me and I would spend so much time with my new obsession. It was the Lara K. Hamilton, Vam Anita Blake, Vampire Hunter series. Now, this is definitely for adults. The first eight books are amazing. Then the series goes downhill. But those eight books shaped my reading taste, shaped who I am and how, what I like reading so much that to these days, even if the books are shit, because after the 10 book, 
We go so much downhill into poor erotica, forgetting bloody mess adventures full of brutality and amazing politics that were the first eight slash ten books. This day I'm still reading it just because I cannot even stand, even contemplate the fact that I will not read every book in the series just because these characters I still love so much and I'm suffering every time I read a book now but I'm still reading it. And with vampires also arrived werewolves. However, the werewolves came in the form of a female werewolf and that was the anxiety of Calix the werewolf. This is the story that takes place in England and Scotland and we have this very raw, savage werewolf girl escaping her family and finding shelter with these two humans and she's addicted to a bunch of stuff, she's self-harming, she's out to self-destruct and at the same time destruct everybody else and I remember that I loved it, I read the last book in the trilogy this year, bit disappointed, I didn't love it as much as I used to, the writing though is really weird and if you're in that age range of 16 and all of that and you like those kind of books or you know somebody who's in might like them. They're awesome, YA, hard eating, very weirdly written. It's just something you have to try because it's not something I can say. Like a majority of people will probably hate the writing style. I thought it was so freaking weird to mix very intense topics with very superfluous, silly talks between characters. Very weird. These days I don't love it. Back then, I don't know, I, I love this series. Probably more because of the savage werewolf girl at all. And then we hit my 17 where I started blending fantasy with more romance and erotica genre and I did that by, because I read Kushal's Dark Trilogy. Now this is a epic fantasy trilogy that has subsequent other trilogies, um, trilogies and it's the story of this girl who is born with this spot, the red spot in one of her eyes which marks her as chosen by a god of pain and basically she can withstand a lot of pain and she becomes this concubine very famous for serving clients who were in S&M but, but the erotica and the sex is so little compared to the epic fantasy politics and action that's going on it's one of my favorite pairs ever I still remember the couple I, it's just it's very brutal like it's very intense and I remember them going on journeys and a lot of adventures and intrigue it was very I mean it's amazing it is honestly amazing to these days I think it's one of the best fantasy series of the genre that mixed romantic elements and erotic elements with classical fantasy elements if you want although it doesn't look anything like your classical fantasy but I still recommend these to these days it's amazing and at the same time I was very much into thrillers from Ikea with Richard Giffaletti. So when I was 17, I read The Bone Collector by Jeffrey Deaver, Deaver, I don't remember how you pronounce it. Anyway, there is also a movie with Denzel Washington and Angelina Jolie. Loved the books so much. Like I remember the twist in this series, which is a very long series, the Lincoln Rhyme series it's called. So if you're into crime and you want a very amazing protagonist who's so freaking genius, I think Lincoln has an accident or something, so he so he's bedridden and he works with Amelia, I think Amelia is her name, to solve crime. So he's the mind and she kind of brings in the muscle if you want. But they're both working together, it's, it's amazing, it's full of twists. Each book tackles a different crime and it's mayhem is going on in every one of them. And if you like these kind of books, it's really one you should give it a try. And on the same note, on those years, I became obsessed with Patricia Cornwell's book. Now this is the Italian cover of book, I don't know, 15 in the series. So uh, just take the name uh, and the Case Carpetta series. I became obsessed with Case Carpetta. I think she's a forensic pathologist that for some reasons, she always has to solve the crimes of the body she's dissecting and deciding the cause of death and all of that. And I remember that it's just a mixture of science and her getting herself in a lot of trouble and solving mysteries, which I really, really enjoyed. And again, I'm going to continue reading this series forever, even if I've not read one in 10 years, probably. I'm going to continue on, I promise. And then we get into, again, fantasy, a new 
fantasy subgenre, which is comic fantasy. And these all started when I became obsessed with this war series by Terry Pratchett. And I didn't read initially them in any order. I'm going to do a separate video when I'm finishing my Disco War TBR. I'm going to explain some series, what I love most, what I love less. But the reason why I become obsessed with Disco War, and I'm just going to leave that, is Reaperman, which is the subseries where you follow death. And I remember that I was laughing so much, I was crying while reading this. And I it opened me a world, and that was the Disco War. And Again, wait for that video for me to get more details and if I already put it up by the time you're watching this, I'll link it down below. But, oh boy, the Disco War series. If you are into humoristic comic fantasy, and even if you're not, you should give it a try. They are just unique fantasy and I'm so grateful to Ripperman. To Ripperman to this day is one of the books which made me laugh the most. <laughs> 